I've gotta say, I'm really glad I switched projects because I'm actually having fun making games again. I'm moving fast, trying out different ideas, and I just put out my second prototype yesterday, which I'm already once again getting valuable feedback on. So I'm gonna talk a bit about what's new, some of how things work under the hood, and then some of what I'm going to do in the next build. The first big change for this one was upscaling everything as I mentioned last week, but I don't think I mentioned that I'm rendering the text at twice the resolution of everything else. So I'm just applying a 2x scaling to the root node of each of the main game scenes, and then a half scaling to all the text objects, including buttons and things that have text on them. This is just to make things a little bit easier to read, because if you pixelate text too much, it's, it's pretty bad. While I was at it with redoing the pixel art for pretty much everything, I also decided to add two more burners to the stovetop and to change how that looks. Instead of a horizontal gradient, there's now a ring of indicator lights around a knob. And I've also added some tutorial text to make it clear that you're supposed to be dragging up and down on those knobs to adjust the temperature. I also tried out a couple of ideas from the Discord server, including adding a second rack for equipment, so you can now pull off as many pans as you need, and choose which plates you want to serve your dish on. Instead of having the plates fixed in the serving area, now you have to drag them there yourself, and once again I've added some tutorial text to make that clear. Another suggestion I got from Discord was an alternate kitchen layout, which I've added as a toggle on the main menu. I want to do a lot of these toggles in the future so I can experiment with different options for things and get feedback on which way people like better. Alongside this, I've also added a switch for the new collision physics feature, although really physics isn't quite the right word here. I was going to be using Godot's physics engine to have objects push each other around, but I had such a hard time getting that to work correctly, I finally realized it would probably be quicker to make my own solution. And in fact, in just 10 lines of code added to the drag function, I've made objects detect when they overlap each other based on a circular collision radius, and then they push each other out of the way based on the direction between their centers. It's very simplistic, but pretty satisfying as is, and sometimes the simplest solution is the best. Even if I add objects that aren't circular in the future, I think it'll be fine, because it's just an approximation. It doesn't need to be perfect. Other improvements include some particle effects when things are cooking, making things easier to grab by testing multiple pixels around your mouse pointer, revamping how food is procedurally colored as it cooks, adding a pause menu and full screen toggle, and I've also pretty much completely revamped how objects interact with each other, which I might as well give you a closer look at now. For an example, let's look at the plate. Although I'm not using Godot's physics for collisions anymore, I am using Area2D and Collision Shape nodes to detect when objects are overlapping. Each layer is for a different behavior. Anything in the grabbable layer can be dragged around by the player. Anything in the cookable layer can receive heat. And anything in the collector layer can hold food objects that are dragged onto it. In the kitchen scene, there's an invisible hand node that follows the mouse pointer. When you press the mouse button, it looks for overlapping objects in the grab layer, preferring whichever one is in front, and if something is found, it calls grab on that object. When you release the mouse pointer, it will drop any grabbed object, and if you didn't move more than a pixel, it will undo the drag and interpret this as a tap instead, although I don't have any tappable objects yet. When a food chunk is dropped, it looks for overlapping objects in the collector layer, preferring whichever one is closest. If a collector is found, it will be told to hold this object, so it will be moved when the collector is moved and when you start dragging the food chunk out again, it will be removed from the collector. To give you an idea of how the simulation works, ingredients can have an arbitrary number of layers, consisting of a sprite and a component. A component defines starting aspects as well as reactions that can occur in response to cooking or other things in the future. These can change aspects and the color. When a food chunk is created from an ingredient, it will scan the pixels of each layer, looking for anything with an alpha greater than 0.1. For each such pixel, it will create a new particle, the particles themselves contain a reference to the component they were created from, states for any reactions, and the original color in the sprite. Another big new feature in this build is a first pass at judging. So right now everything's hard-coded to react to different ranges of how burnt or how raw it is, how spicy, etc., as well as some pre-written conditions like if you didn't put three plates in the serving area or um, if you didn't put a steak on the plate. But I will be doing this procedurally later on. It's just going to take... Um, a bit of work to figure out how to generate the judging rules to correspond to the challenge, to correspond to the ingredients in a way to make sure that you can serve a successful dish. But first I want to experiment with handmade things because that'll help me get a feel for what types of rules, what types of things the judges will be looking for in a context that's easier to understand. So for the next build I'm planning on adding more equipment, more ingredients, probably a second challenge. And I also want to rework how the actual cooking is simulated, because it's really basic right now. There's no diffusion of temperatures. I mentioned last week that I wanted to add that, but when I started reading up on how um, 
heat conduction actually works in the real world, it was a lot more complicated than I expected. So I'm not going to go for a fully realistic simulation, um, but I need a little bit more time to think about what's close enough, what I can do easily that will still make for a good game. So I guess that's all I've got for this week. As always, it really helps me out if you hit the like button, spread the word about this channel, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching.